a crazy, crazy beautiful mess. That's how I would describe not only my life, but my garden. Things are really just needing a lot of attention. We've got some maintenance that needs to be done, some pest control. Right now, it's no longer just like the coast period, at least for my zone. I gotta maintain some stuff. Just come along with me, let's hang out, let's chat, learn something. Warn you, you're probably gonna hear my chicken, my rooster going nuts right now. I think he doesn't like me out here or something, whatever, but you might hear him in the background. Anyways, I was gonna show you, uh, I have a pest issue right now with my tomatoes, and it's an ant issue. We, commonly get ant colonies that just love these big metal raised beds. I think it's because they're so warm and they really conduct a lot of heat, but every season we always have an issue with ants. And what has solved that is like an organic cold pressed neem oil. I like to stick with just the straight up neem oil. I don't like to use uh, some of these other products that you can see online that have other ingredients in them. I just like to use the neem oil and generally it does work pretty well. You just have to stay on top of the application. But I'll show you. So these are like some healthy tomato plants right here, right next to uh, where the ant colony is. Same tomato plant and it's uh, really sad. So what the ants do, I'll show you a better angle. They kind of, I've already kind of pulled this up but they start eating away around the root system because they're making, you know, their little colony and this plant's pretty much done. Thankfully, these tomato plants are doing well. But what I'm gonna do now as a result is I'm going to try to kill off this ant colony. It is such a significant problem here. Like we've had eggplant plants and things like that that just haven't survived because of the ants. And I've started, you know, like a different season applying neem oil um, on a regular basis. And I've seen such dramatic differences. A lot of people actually apply the neem oil directly to the leaves like the under part of the leaves and you can do that i just prefer to actually water the neem oil into the soil neem oil is a natural derivative of the neem tree as a directa indica it's completely organic it's been used for centuries in places like india as an organic pesticide neem oil works in three different ways to kill bugs it suppresses bugs appetite so when they eat the neem oil they are no longer hungry then they die it also disrupts their hormones so they can't reproduce and lastly it will smother certain bugs depending on the type of exoskeleton they have when i'm treating a problem area affected at the soil level i apply three tablespoons of fish fertilizer one tablespoon of epsom salt and one tablespoon of neem oil per one gallon of water and mix that together i apply it directly over the rooted area that is having the issue such as ants you wanna make sure that you're not applying this in random places because you can harm beneficial creatures in the soil. It was an impressively windy day out, which definitely reminded me that these pepper plants need to be trellised or given some support, including a few of my tomato plants. I just quickly grabbed some bamboo sticks and some metal wiring. I'm really loosely tying the pepper plants to the base of the bamboo sticks that way I don't injure the pepper plants. I don't want them to uh, be restricted in the growing process at all. A top priority to me this year was to make sure the soil was really healthy. Utilizing mushroom compost and worm castings has made it so that my plants can grow healthier, faster, and they can also ward off pests better on their own. Now that I got my pepper plants all staked up, I didn't even realize that there was potentially a problem until it was a very windy day like today. I'm actually gonna go over and work on these tomato plants on my cattle panel wall. They are, it's a huge mess. Like it's, it's seriously a big mess. I don't even know where to start and dig in because they're just like these huge overgrown bushes. Yes, I should have pruned them and trained them earlier, but I, my hands were tied. I did not have a choice with just having a baby six weeks ago. There's not been a lot of opportunities, but right now we're gonna do it because there's like, there's so many tomatoes on there. It's, it's, we gotta clean this up. Every gardener has something that gets them really excited. 
and raise your hand if you are a gardener that gets super excited about tomatoes. We are just on the cusp of tons of tomatoes being ripe all at the same time. Lots of work to be done, but it's definitely something worth getting excited about. What I'm doing since I don't have like string or more ideal uh, wiring to trellis tomatoes is just use this wiring that I have at my house. It's definitely not ideal, I will say, because you don't want to end up like injuring the plants, but I've got time and this is all I've got, so it'll work. It's just not like the best thing to use. I'm trying to find like the end of, there's the end. So as I'm out here just enjoying this amazing weather, thanks to the 7 a.m. thunderstorm that just happened, which is amazing because Usually it's super, super humid after a thunderstorm. And right now there's like literally no humidity in the air. It's absolutely blissful outside and cool. The high is like 78 today. So for us Floridians, you know, we're really soaking in any type of wonderful weather day that we can because our days are numbered as we approach May. They really are, it's gonna be so hot. These are the Grab Dilio. Tomatoes, I have to look, but they're so heavy with tomatoes. I feel like I'm gonna injure the plant right now. I don't even know like what's a stem versus a tomato. It's really crazy. So trying to put these up without hurting the plant. The cool part about these tomatoes is that they were, I feel like they were the first ones to start to produce tomatoes. And the other day my sister and I were walking through, I was just giving her a little personal garden tour. She noticed like two little red tomatoes and I'm like, what? That is so crazy because it's the first ones of the season, the first ripe tomatoes. She had the little, the um, laser eye noticing all that. We immediately picked them and ate them and it was just such a, like, just this is just a, such a good feeling to have that first tomato bite of the first tomato. So I just saw the tag of these. This is the Martinez Roma. So that's what this is. I've been calling it the wrong thing the whole time. I'm just going to do my best because some of these tomato plants are really, really overgrown. And I want to try to avoid using the metal as, um, as much as possible. I just want to use the actual trellis. So I'm just kind of weaving the tomato plants through really carefully if they're long enough limbs. So it's definitely possible I could be late on, or too late on this whole thing. I saw a few squash vine borers. I'm pretty sure that's what they wore. They looked exactly like them. They were really hovering around my squash plants, landing on the leaves, and I was running out here like a crazy person with a shovel trying to hunt the squash vine borers down. My husband was watching me from the windows and he was like, what are you doing out? He came out to the garden. He was like, what are you doing out there? Are you like trying to like, kill off a squirrel or something. I was like, no. Oh my God, I think that's what, ah! <laughs> oh. There's a squash vine borer that just came. I have to kill it. Oh my God, I'm gonna try to find it and show you guys. I look like a crazy person when I try to kill these because they're so big and scary looking, although they won't sting you. And they're trying to kill my squash plants. Oh my God. All right, I'm on the hunt now. Okay. I have to get a shovel and hunt this thing down. The good thing about the squash vine borers is they're pretty slow because they're like really big. I'm trying to find my shovel because last time I just ran around the garden and uh, killed one, a squash vine borer, and then left my shovel there. So now I'm trying to find this stupid bug that's trying to attack my squash plants. I can't believe that just happened in this video. And that's what I wanted to say is, how am I already seeing these bugs in, a, well, I first started to see them in April, it's May. Usually you don't really start to see them until July or June, basically. So 
I'm on high alert. Gotta kill these things. My son's outside now, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to kill the boar and watch this little crazy person down here. There's a lot of people who uh, might not realize like what a squash vine borer is. They lay their eggs at the base of a squash plant and then those larvae will drill into the squash plant and basically start like killing it from the inside out because they don't have a flow of water and then the whole plant will start to uh, wilt and die basically. So uh, it's not an uh, attack that can be, that they can come back from usually. He got himself some strawberries. He knows where the strawberry tower is and where to help himself. We're trying to find a bug. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find a bug right now. So basically, the name of the game with squash vine borers is you want to protect the base of the squash plant. You don't want the squash larvae to be able to access the base of the plant. So, what I've gotten online, I got this on Amazon, I'll link them, is this athlete's tape, and I'm gonna wrap it around the base of all of my squash plants. I saw another YouTuber did this, they said they had really good success. I've used foil in the past, which is a good barrier, and I've also used, uh, let's see, um, coconut husks as well. So I'm gonna give this a try because they're really, the athlete's tape is really flexible and I like how it stretches with the plant because some of these other methods, they're not very flexible and they don't stretch with the plant. So let's wrap this around. Yeah. <laughs> let's wrap this around the base of all of our squash plants and see if it helps. Here, Noah, right here, there. And see if it helps with protecting our squash plants from these stupid vine borers. Just pick it. Yeah, you can pick it. Here, do you need help? Yes. Yep. Mash it. Whoa. As you'll hear me say in just a minute, this wasn't my favorite method, but I think it would be more successful if I had done this when the plants were younger and the base was easier to get to. Okay, so I don't really know how I feel about the athlete's tape. Uh, it's actually pretty hard to get it around the base of these squash plants, but I did want to show you guys I do have some more gray zucchini to harvest. Yeah, these plants are just like spitting out squash faster than we can eat. We just got another chip drop, which is just like a cubic ton, basically, of mulch for free. It's a service called Chip Drop. Go on their website and you'll get, you can just apply to have them come to your house and drop it off. It helps arborists. So we just got another one, which is awesome because now I can start putting mulch underneath all of these um, like different squash and watermelons, cantaloupes, things like that that are growing so they don't rot and then start mulching the rows. With the no-till, no-dig garden method, the big thing about it is you know heavy mulching. You wanna trap in that moisture and it ends up turning into compost over time and you're creating this really healthy ecosystem that you're not like digging into and disturbing. So chip drop has been just crucial for us to be able to make that happen on a budget because it's free. Oh. My son just went inside and I grabbed a sun shirt and a hat because it's fully sunny right now and I prefer to put on like sun shirts and everything as opposed to sunblock because it's easier to make sure that you're, you know, covering everything and um, putting on sunblock is kind of a pain all the time. So anyways, we've got lots of little watermelons that are starting to grow. I see all these little tiny, tiny baby watermelons. For some reason, one watermelon decided, you know, early on that, hey, I'm going to start growing. So we've got a pretty big one that I'll show you and I'm going to just place mulch underneath 
the like bigger watermelons and underneath all the butternut squash so that they don't like rot when they're kind of sitting on the ground. That's a really good option. Or you could put like straw and things like that underneath as well to make sure that they don't like rot just sitting on the ground, like a wet ground. I like the mulch because it's less chances of like any type of seeds and things like that that could be sometimes found in straw. So I got some of the butternut squash and watermelon mulch. There's still like a lot to do. The whole garden, like that would be the saying of the garden, there's a lot to do. And uh, I need to stop thinking of like new projects because just with this alone, it's a lot. Anyways, there are a lot of these bushing cucumbers, which I'm actually really enjoying too because they're pretty crunchy. They're not like a really high water content cucumber. I don't know why, I just don't really uh, prefer those ones, but I'll take what I can get. Here's some of these bushing cucumbers. They're pretty big. I've got a lot of these to harvest because the rain, whenever like the rain comes through, um, all of these cucumbers just like shoot out like crazy. And uh, the plants are doing pretty good right now. Like I'm talking there's tons of these to harvest. I feel like a farmer right now. This is amazing. It's like a really good feeling to, to finally just like have such an abundance of vegetables it's like something i've always dreamed of for so long you know this all kind of started living in an apartment having that balcony garden and uh then like starting to watch youtube videos you know years ago when i was in a house and just starting to type in like how to start a vegetable garden you know, how do I germinate seeds and all these things and just becoming like more and more obsessed with everything. I used to want to like live off the grid. You know, I was obsessed with being like mortgage free, debt free, living off the grid, uh, growing all of our own fruits and vegetables, everything like that. It was like an obsession for a long time. And we've kind of, we don't live like in, in the middle of nowhere. We still kind of relatively live in the city but um it is cool to be able to compromise and still fulfill that dream to a certain extent having all of your own vegetables starting a little fruit orchard one peach tree at a time blueberry bushes all of that it's a really cool feeling because when we first moved in here there was nothing there was no uh, fruit trees there was no garden there was nothing I'm pretty sure the old owners used to have horses uh, that used to live here and that was like their thing. They would just let the horses roam around this, this property. It's about three acres. Yeah, so it's really, I like doing the YouTube because then I get to kind of document and see when I first started doing YouTube, we only had a few of these big beds over here. Uh, I'll show you the big metal beds that you've seen in there. So we only had those and then we started doing chip drops and just adding beds one bed at a time. We were building beds, these um, wood pallet beds, and we were buying these like kind of affordable Amazon metal beds. So it's just taken like a few years of every season when the weather's nice and cool, we just, that's like our project season and we'll just add more and more and more and expand more and more. And uh, to finally kind of look around and just think, wow, like we're getting there. It's a cool feeling. I've got a lot, a lot more I need to get done in the garden today. So I'm gonna have to let you guys go. And I also need to get inside too. But I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and just kind of watching me yap and get attacked by a squash vine borer earlier today. 
Uh, but yeah, it feels nice to be out here and just show you guys what's going on. So thanks for hanging out and until next time.